All right, guys, welcome uh, to ASM's HQ. Uh, today we're doing an Instagram live show. We will be putting this on YouTube after. Uh, I'm your host, Chris Dow, and uh, if you're the first time to Instagram page or to YouTube, welcome for the first time. We help athletes get scholarships here in America. And today's very special episode, so I'm joined with a knock. How you doing, buddy? Good, 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 very good. Good, man. So Nock is a former professional soccer player uh, in England, we say football. Yep, we do. Indeed. Um, and we basically want to explain to you guys, especially for soccer players, uh, how you can get a scholarship here and then get to the MLS after, or maybe pro somewhere else. So, Enoch, let's start off by explaining who you are, what you're about, where you're from, uh, for people that maybe don't know you or do know you, so they know a bit more about you. Okay, great. Well, I'm uh, obviously, like you said, ex soccer player from football, from London, born in London, um, played for a few teams, played for Luton Town, my first club, played for Bristol City, moved on to Leeds. Played for Tranmere, Knox County. Also had a couple of caps from Nigeria as well. So proud, proud of that. So um, yes, yeah, so my lead shirt as well. Yes, that's my lead shirt lead up there shirt. as well. Signed, signed and delivered for ASM scholarships. But um, yeah, so my my story is pretty different. So I went into the game at 21 years old after completing a degree. I ended up playing against Luton Town's first team in a game, and they asked me to come back on trial, and then. Had a few months of being in and out of the first team, done well about February and of that season, scored a hat trick, signed a pro contract, and then I had a 12 year career. So it is possible to get into the game at a later age. You just need to have your discipline, get your wits about you, and really like and push on and, and push on with your passion. Yeah, so let's talk about that because you obviously have a different pathway than what we're pushing now. And I think this is where it's going to get really interesting today is why you think America now is the right way for people to go. What did you study when you were in England uh, back in the day? I studied a business admin degree. I was, yeah. I was into business at the time. I thought that was going to be my pathway. I was never at a club when I was younger. I was never a professional team at like the Arsenal's and the West Ham's in London that some of my friends were at. I was never at those teams when I was um, 13, 14 years old. So I came into the game really late at a professional level in all ways. So it was like, it, it's, still a, it's still something that you can pursue and it's still something that you can actually get to at a later stage in your career. Yeah. Guys, if you're on Instagram as well, uh, please type away questions. Uh, we will we'll be doing a QA and a after our questions. Uh, so if you have questions, please write them in there. We've got Joe behind the camera. We'll read them out in, uh, a bit later on. Um, why do you feel the American pathway is a great way for soccer players these days? Because you didn't do it, so why are you recommending it now? So at 18 years old, when I went to university, I didn't have the option of playing uh, uh, soccer at a level that was a decent standard. Right. It wasn't going to great facilities with great changing rooms and great pitches. I was playing for my local team, which was which was great for me at the time. I was paying to play. I was helping to put up goals in the right. cold, right. Uh, pull up like pull as up the nets as we do in England. <laughs> um, the showers were like terrible in the, in the yeah. teams that I was going I was going to. So this is a great pathway for people that enjoy the game, yeah. but they have something to fall back on by getting educated as well. Right. Right. And obviously now you're living in Miami, uh, you're now working here at ASM. Um, can you explain what you do at ASM for us as the Executive Soccer Director? What, what's your purpose and what you're trying to achieve with us? Well, I really want to just help these kids. There's a lot of international and domestic, they love the game of soccer and I want them to follow that passion. But I understand the game, there's, there's, a, lot of com there's a lot of competition around the world in terms yeah. of kids that want to play professional soccer. It's huge, it's a huge business. Yeah. And there's so many kids around the world that wants to be in, in that yeah. position that I was fortunate enough to have. Yeah. So my my uh, my goal here is to really have people push towards their soccer career, but also get that education and have that fallback in case it doesn't happen. How many players did you see from, say, maybe the Premiership, or I mean, obviously more England focused, but I know it happens all over the world, who didn't have an education, turn pro straight away. Um, and then a couple of years later, lose their contracts, and then you know they're stuck at that situation. How many times have you seen that happen? It's, it's numerous times. It's not even that. It's even at 16, 17 year old, 17 year olds that want to get their pro contract, yeah. and they may not get that contract. So you, there's another option. You right. can go and you can drop down the league, and you maybe you can go into non-league, and maybe right. you can push up from there, right. and you can keep going. There's some success stories like Jamie Vardy's and Ricky right. Lambert's of this world that went into the lower leagues and eventually got all the way to play for England. Right. But that's special cases. It's very few. It's very few. Majority don't, don't go that way. Majority doesn't really go that route. They can have a career playing like League One, League Two football, right. maybe. But what do you earn in League One, League Two football? League One, League Two football, you're earning around a thousand, fifteen hundred a week. Right. So it's not going to be something substantial for a career. Yeah. 
and you look at the game of soccer as well. You pay, you probably have ten, maybe fifteen years tops as an right. athlete. Yeah. So if you're if you're playing League One, League Two football, you're gonna have to work after you finish your career. Right. So you have to think about what you're gonna do when your career is over. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, obviously I've been doing this for a long time, and we have a lot of soccer players. And when we met Soccer X, um, we spoke about this. But the American pathway is becoming very attractive now. I think with social media, more and more athletes, females and males, have seen what it's like here in the states. Now you've lived over here for a while and you've seen a bit more about it. Would you, would this be something you would have done if you knew about it years ago? Yes, but definitely. Because at eighteen years old, I had no options about right. playing professional soccer. Right. So I would have been okay. This is an opportunity for me to get my education, but still enjoy my passion of playing every right. single every single week and training every day. And you have you got physios, you got strength and conditioning coaches out here. The facilities are insane compared to right. what you would have seen in, in England, even at some pro clubs. And with um, you know athletes watching so think about coming to the states that have the dream of being a pro how realistic is that because I mean, we have had it happen we've had players come here go to division one division two then get drafted into mls that's really why we had you join us was to mm -hmm. build that program up but i'd like to go into more detail of your your network of how we can make that happen for someone watching this who has the ambition to come get the education have that security for the future but still follow that pro pathway if you're looking to really follow that pro pathway, then there's there's definitely options. They obviously have a draft system out, out here in America. There's a lot of MLS teams. There's a USL league out here as well. So there is ways that we can use my network within the within the soccer business to really try to push them. I can obviously help as a mentor, obviously help in, t in terms of improving your game as well. Yeah. So we can work on different ways in which we can get you to that level that you really want to be at and following your dreams. Who Who is your network? So I obviously know you know a lot of big names, like, but maybe they, they don't. So who, who you, do you know that you can pick up that phone and like make stuff happen for people? So I live, I live in Miami. We have, uh, we have Miami FC here right now, which right. is um, at the moment is the NPSL team, but it's a, it's a very professional club. Yeah. We have like, um, like the Tampa Bay Rowdies out here. We have a few MLS teams. Not to mention the teams that I have played for obviously in England, but have right. great connections, and we can um, we can look at diff different ways in which we can showcase their talents in terms of putting them in front of these professional coaches. And you know, lots of agents as well. You know, lots of managers. agents across the when board. I, when I met you, you were with the ex Liverpool manager. Yes, yeah. there was um, obviously at soccer race. There was right. like Gerard Houllier that was there as well. We have like great guys like um, Jason Roberts in the, yeah. the CONCACAF and like Ian Taylor, he's got his global soccer pro where they do showcases with professional clubs right. in England. So we can look at different aspects in terms of trying to showcase your talents and get your visibility in front of professional coaches. Right, so like basically athletes watching this who have the dream of playing professional soccer, with your help, with ASM's help, we can get them to college and then we can help them look at what's possible after as a pro career, but also in a, in a professional career. If they yes. don't make it to go to the soccer world of pro, they can you can help them with the jobs market and connections in soccer. Yes, definitely. Because if you want to be around soccer and you want like I've come out of the game, but I've always wanted to still be around the business of soccer. Yeah. So this has given me a great opportunity to, to help young kids that want to get into the game, but also you can there's other jobs around soccer that people need. There's there's physios, there's um, strength and conditioning coaches. There's all these different aspects that you may learn in your university. Yeah, we can also give you access into that world as well. What's your recommendation to maybe uh, an athlete who's playing for a top youth club, um, and they're thinking like, why should I leave the club? You know, and come to the US when I'm already in the club, or, or maybe they get if they get released, that's an obvious pick to come to mm -hmm. the states. But maybe you know they're in the club and not really progressing. Would you say, hey, maybe you should start thinking about the US? So like how how does an athlete determine when they should make this transition? Listen, if you're if you're guaranteed a, a big contract as a as a as a YT and come into the professional game at 17, 18 years old, by all means take that contract. Yeah. I'm not saying to drop that to come to the US. But coming out here for those that may not get that contract or may drop down the leagues or they may drop out the game completely, this is an option for them to get educated, do something that they enjoy in yeah. terms of the education and academic side of things, but also have and enjoy soccer and playing soccer, playing at good stadiums. Playing in front of 10, 20,000 people that some of these universities will have supporting yeah. you guys. So it's actually a great way to enjoy the game at a professional standard, while well, means you're not getting paid at that point, but we can obviously push you on as well. And you're gonna come from a standard where you've been coached by professionals in, in Europe, in the UK, and you will look on favorably in the United States. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a very good point. Like, if you have a big contract, I mean, obviously that's a life-changing mm -hmm. moment, and then you can obviously study later because you're going to make your bank now and yeah. playing. But the reality is so slim. 
I think that's why the US is such a, an interesting proposition because you do get all that high level experience whilst it's all for free and then you can still transfer even back to Europe. You don't have to stay in the US. I mean, I've had lots of US players also go over to Europe and, and play over there. So with, with enough network and connections, this is why we're having the team right now to help you soccer players get, get out there. Um, definitely want to get some questions from you guys. Joe, I'm probably going to see you nodding. There's some questions coming in. Yeah, so, you know, how do you, obviously for the athletes that are, that are about to come to the US and start playing US soccer. Obviously, it's a bit of a different sport compared to Europe and the rest of the world. You know, how do you prepare for that? Who's that question from? Uh, oh, I don't have a name. Don't know. See it. Well, we you work with us as a, as a, our team. We have a we have a great placement team. We actually have people that have played in the soccer college divisions in every single level in the US. So we have experts in that field that can help you get placed in the US. All you need to do is just reach out to us and we will jump on a call with you guys and we will explain every, the whole process for you guys going forward. And is that even like, so let's say you've got a player who's in the youth academy who's not sure what to do. You can, as a former player yourself, you can really understand where they're coming from and give, give them that right advice. Of what yeah, to definitely, because I've, I've been in that situation where I didn't feel I was good enough to play professional football. I didn't feel that that was going to be my path at that stage when I was really younger. I was lucky enough to get to that stage at 21. So you can always follow your dream. Your dream doesn't have to be over just because you don't get that contract at 18. But you can, there's different pathways to get to that where you want to be in terms of the professional game. How do you feel like the, the education is going to be a factor for an athlete? Because I know I had a lot of soccer friends growing up in England and uh, I actually played for Fulham and Youth Academy until I was 12. And a lot of times it's like, oh, I'm not going to be good at school. How am I going to do university, right? So how is that America going to help them with that? Because obviously I'm tutors, but you know, what's your advice to them? And we have like tutors that can help you with any cross cross examinations in terms of your SATs to get out here. You can go into a field that you enjoy. If you're really into sports, you can look at going into a, a more sporting sports sciences. You can look at going to more strength and conditioning, yeah. physical education type roles. There's different aspects. You can really follow your your dreams and your hobbies and work towards that into your and towards your education. Right, right, right. Next question, Jeff. Um, George actually asks, you know, academically speaking, do you know much about the transition between, you know, somewhere back home, wherever they are, and the US? Like I just touched on just a moment ago, there would be those SATs and the ACT that you may have to do an examination. With our VIP package at ASM scholarships, you would have a tutor that can help you yeah. pass those exams and move forward really to get yourself over in terms of the academic side of things as well. And also, you have to remember guys, when you get to college, they have their own tutor system. So you're gonna have, as a team, you have your own tutor that's gonna help you through the coursework. So, you know, it's not, imp it's not impossible stuff. The only way you fail is if you don't try. I mean, you have mm -hmm. all the support, all the network to help you. It's not like uh, high school, you're left to just do it yourself. You will have that support structure to help you get through the classwork. Um, and it, you can make it as hard or as easy as you like. I mean, if you wanna study to be a bio, chemist that might be quite challenging if you don't like schoolwork but you know, if you do something like you said and not choosing something you like you're going to really enjoy it it's not going to be work is it because you, you actually want to do it and exactly. you find it enjoyable um, so it's definitely you know this pathway is always very doable if you have the momentum to do it next question uh, what advice you know would you give to players you know from a coach's perspective what do the coaches look for so over in america maybe slightly maybe slightly different to the uk so over here, there's that, there's that physicality. You need to be fit, obviously even in the UK as well. Fitness is, is, is great. The physicality of the game out, out here is probably similar to a League One, League Two type level. So again, you have, to be, you have to be strong, you have to have that endurance, you have to have that stamina, you have to really push yourself. So even if you're not playing pro, one thing I did when I was 18, 19 years old, I stopped going out because I, this is something I wanted to pursue and I was training every day on my own just to keep my fitness levels up that in case a chance did happen, I was able to be fit enough to really showcase myself in front of those coaches. What's it gonna take for an athlete watching this um, to make the MLS? Even if they go through college or non-college, like what would, or even if it make the premiership, like how, how hard do they have to train to get to that point? Is you're, it luck, is it, you know? It, it's not just luck, it's like you're coming at a disadvantage because you're not at a, you're not at Manchester United and you're not at Liverpool. So you're coming at a really disadvantage. So what you have to do is work doubly as hard as the person that is at Manchester United so that you can go to that next level. So it's the things you do when no one's watching you. Those, those are the main things that's gonna make you become a pro. Those are the main things that you, people, people don't see and people are not gonna actually realize that's gonna make you successful. 
So like just like physical training? Just the just physical work training, training, working on your technique every day, even if um, you, you finish your training sessions or work you do after. If you look at players, obviously one of the greatest players of all time, Cristiano Ronaldo, right, the mentioned. work he yeah. does when no one sees is what comes out when he's on the pitch. So he works harder than probably anybody I've, like, I've heard about in the world to get to where he's at today. Right, right, right. Next question, Jeff. Very shy. Very shy today, yeah. Uh, not another question so far since the last one. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, obviously I've come from the UK. You know, I've been through the, the system in the UK and I found it very valuable to come out here and combine my education. Um, do you wish, obviously you played professionally in the UK, so maybe not, but do you wish, you know, you got that experience of education and soccer at the same time? I wish I knew about it at 18 years old because I would have had another option and another pathway. At 18 years old, I, w I wanted to be a professional like, football player, but I didn't have another path other than the one I chose. Right, right. So I didn't, I didn't know you about... Have choice. Yeah, yes. I didn't have no choices. This is a great choice. This is a great choice to enjoy the game of soccer and really, like, you're flying from state to state, you're playing at great stadiums, you've got great facilities, you've got yeah. great change rooms. You're not getting changed in a porter cabin <laughs> on a cold Tuesday night. <laughs> like in Warsaw, so it's like um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's different. So it's um it's it's great to like really, to really it's a great option to pursue and to look into. And the other thing I'd say as well, like you know, you said you're wishing you're eighteen, but reality, you need to know at fifty. Yeah, right? so like we can really process you really quickly. Right. We get your your videos up, you get your stats up, and we can see how good a player you are. Right. And then you can work with me from really early to really say this is what you need to improve on, and this yeah. is what's going to really get you a great scholarship out in the US. Right, because if you want to end up at a big school like a Division One, Division Two, like a top level team, they're not just going to recruit you in a week, right? They want to see your progression and mm -hmm. transition. This is why we brought enough on the team with his experience and knowledge. You know, he knows what it takes to get to that level and he's got a network of people that can help you get to that, that next level, right? Mm -hmm. So you can probably notice that I said we're, we're recruiting the best of the best. Um, and the reason you're going to start 15, even at 14, we're going to look at where you're at, look at your goals and then get you to that pathway. And every year kind of hit some key targets, promote you. We call it a soft campaign in, in recruitment world. So coaches get to know who you are, see your progression. When it comes to the right time, normally about 16 and a half years old, we start the harder recruiting campaigns. But we get you having the interviews with the coaches and we try to get that, that offer to you before you're 17 years old. Now, if you do come late, it's not the end of the world. Um, you're just going to have less options, right? So if you start the process early, you have absolutely every school available. But as the years go on, less and less spots will happen. So... You know, definitely, if you're thinking about it, just reach out to us. You can DM us. You can go on www.asmscholarships.com, apply for free. A knock on the soccer team will reach out to you, uh, and then they'll give you some advice, and we can take it from there. And knock, is there anything else you want to leave the audience a uh, message, anything you want to share that you feel could be valuable? I would say just always follow your dreams. There's different pathways to get to that dream, but keep following your dreams. If you're passionate about soccer, the U.S. is a great place to actually follow that passion and still follow your dreams and a pathway to go to the pro game. And now Beckham's going to have a team here as well. And Beckham's going to have a team backyard. in Miami, so that's going to be, that's going to be amazing. So, definitely have to um, go down there for a game. Yes, definitely. So we, of course we're going to have that network as well with, in terms of Miami. I live out in Miami, right, so right. you know, it's, um, that's going to be for sure. So for sure, like, deal. Yeah, so there's options, there's always options. Good stuff. Guys, uh, if you watch this at a later date on our YouTube channel, uh, please leave a comment below for any questions you have. We will get back to you on those. And like I said, if you're looking to learn more about if you can come out here and what's possible, reach out to us. Uh, Enoch will reach out to you as a team and we'll hopefully make the dreams come true. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.